Um, he picked an injury very early in the game. He tried to carry on. He wanted to continue the second half, and and we knew it was a significant injury. Um, he's done really well. Um, he's working very hard. He wants to be available. Uh, he's trying. Hopefully, we can get him back soon. But uh, it's an area that we have to be careful and uh, be protective with the player. Um, you touched on like the the issues with COVID. I know you've got Sad Kalasinac and El Neni who tested positive. Just generally, is it a concern, and are you satisfied with the protocols and and how it's being dealt with when players go away compared to to what they have at the club? Well, it's to really know the protocol that uh, all the national teams are applying is is almost impossible because there are so many things that have to be. Uh, controls. We just try to be in contact with them, make sure that um, that they know what we are expecting. Um, they are trying to protect the players as much as possible, like we are doing. In some countries, is more difficult than others. Obviously, the more exposed they are in flights, if they have to go in different planes, obviously the percentages of risk um, are increasing constantly, and um, and it's not ideal. But um, we need to go through this. Uh, we are learning every day about it, and and it's not much that we as managers can do as well. And another issue that one of your other players had, uh, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, um, mm. when he was with Gabon, the, the squad, the pictures of them sleeping on the airport floor. Now the Gabon manager basically said after that Arsenal won't release him again. Is he right? No. Well, um, <laughs> obviously, it was a shock to see a. Uh, all the squad uh, sleeping the way they were doing. Um, I always believe that everybody is trying to do their best and the Gamma national team are trying to organize things the best possible way. Sometimes things happen, unpredictable things happen. And um, it was an experience. I said to all, but take it as an experience. You never, for, I'm sure for many months or years you haven't slept on the floor. Take it from there and just uh, make sure when you are in your bed, you know how good it is, how comfortable it is, and how lucky you are. And that's it. You cannot change it. You cannot rewind it. So take it the way it is and, and move on. And obviously, I hope that the next time it doesn't happen and our players have the rest that, uh, that they need. You I talked I... earlier about, uh, just one more, Dan, just, you talked earlier about management being about resolving issues. Um, I want to ask you about a reported issue at the training ground in the last couple of weeks between David Luiz and Danny Ceballos. Can you clear up what happened, please? Nothing. That training is very competitive and, and issues happen uh, a lot of times uh, and those things get resolved immediately within the team and, uh, and not much to say. No problem between the two? No problem at all. Thank you, Thanks, Boris. We'll move on to George on the BBC, please. Thanks, Dan. Um, Mikel, did you see what happened between the two, between Luis and Danny Ceballos? Did you there? No, I've got a really bad vision from far. That's why we train with uh, behind closed doors. OK, OK. Um, I was just wondering, is William a bit to play on Sunday? Because was he in Dubai in the last two weeks? Yeah, you keep asking me for more and more issues, um, whatever. Um, happens uh, internally with any issues or uh, or things that we don't expect. Um, as always, we will try to resolve them internally. That's been deal with uh, and explained, and uh, we move on. Does it he let you down in a way, making that trip? Well, we had a conversation, and I explained uh, what I was expecting, and uh, there are a lot of personal factors at the moment as well. From our side, um, we need to be in their shoes. A lot of players are having different issues, like any public person uh, out there. And sometimes they make decisions based on the needs or the moment or what people are expecting from them, whether they are right or wrong. I said, obviously, it's, it's a thing that we have to discuss. But um, again, it's been dealt in the right way. And let's move on. Um Joe Willock was excellent uh, when you played in the Europa League and with no party um, and no El Nenny, is it possible that he might start on Sunday? Well, I mentioned with Joe um, that I've been really impressed with Joe, the way he's handled the situation of not having uh, much uh, game time in the Premier League. And uh, I haven't seen him 
trained like he's done in the last five or six weeks under difficult circumstances. And I think the, the reflection of that is the way he's played in, in the Europa League when he had the minutes or, or the Carabao Cup in this case. And, um, and he has a chance like everybody else. Play Eddie and Ketia, of course, used to play for Leeds. He scored two in the week. He could have had a hat trick. Is he in line to start too, possibly? Another one that is fighting and knocking on the door every day. And I really like his mentality. He has scored two. He comes in the training ground and he says, I should have scored four. So that's the type of ambition and hunger that you want from players. So, again, with both of them and, and some others, I'm, um, I'm really happy. Thank you very much. And sorry, quick one, yeah, and sorry, just one, one on Pep, Mikel, I mean, are you pleased he's staying at Man City? I mean, he's a great manager, but... I'm, I'm very him. pleased for him because, uh, as you know, you know, he's never been so long at, uh, at a football club. So the fact that he's extending his contract means that he's extremely happy there, that he's found his place, that he's... Uh, he feels um, valued there, that he has the chemistry that I know with the players, with the fans, and obviously <coughs> with the ownership. So I want the best for him. And if he's extending the contract, it's because he's very happy and he feels that that's uh, the best place for him to continue his, his career. So congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, George. Ian from TalkSport. Hi, Miguel. Hope you're well. Um, just one on Pat there, actually. He said it's you sign a new deal because of the unfinished business. Does that is that worry you in terms of his unfinished business being in the Premier League, or do you think his unfinished business is to win the Champions League? Well, knowing him and his ambitions and how competitive he is, unfinished business means that he wants to win every competition every year, for sure. And if he needs to win the four domestic trophy again and he can do it, I'm sure he's going to try to do it. Obviously, Europe is is a massive thing. He really wants to move there. The club uh, towards that uh, Champions League win, and and that's on his way, you know. And uh, I think medium and long term, that was one of the things that he wanted to achieve. So I'm sure that uh, it will be a focal point. Well, on and off the pitch, you've been documenting the, the, the difficulties certain players have had. I mean, you lost against Villa, and then certain players going on international duty, as you say, Bamian sleeping on the floor, and other players having different issues. Um, is all this because they're, they're getting a bit fatigued because the season is so condensed? I mean, we have Frank Lampard yesterday saying, hang on, 12.30 kickoffs off the back of an international break and you know, asking us to play literally, and you're going to be doing this now because your Open League kicks in again you know, twice a week. I mean, are we really asking too much now of, of, of players and managers? Well, um, it's... it's it's really demanding, it's never been done to play the amount of games that we have to play in a calendar year. It's never been done in the history of football. So it's something new and obviously we know the consequences of that. The only thing from my side that I would demand uh, um, to the Premier League, to the broadcaster is that let's protect the players. You know, uh, at the end of the day, this industry, yes, we can do it without us being together in a room. Uh, we've been doing it training individually. We've been doing it without having the possibility as a manager to speak to them in a room, even without the fans. But guys, we need the players. And we have to protect them as much as possible. They are the protagonists of this whole industry. And uh, whatever you can do, we have to modify the rules and make them a little bit more flexible for them to give them a better opportunity to be fit. And it's not just physically, I mean mentally as well. Let's just do it, please. Like the game with Coventry and Birmingham are starting to have five subs. Is it time for the Premier League next week to say, this, we're changing our minds, we need more players, for player welfare, we'll have five subs? I am all for it, and not only that, but as well to extend the numbers in the squad. Because at the moment we have a big squad um, for different reasons, and we have to leave seven, eight players every time here at home. And Meaning at home means at home, because from training ground you go home, from home you go training ground. So even mentally for them to feel involved, you are traveling away, you are two days without the squad, without your teammates, it will be really helpful for them. So let's try to help them. Let's make them involved at least on what we are trying to do here. And uh, and I think there are easy decisions, you know. So I don't know. It's my opinion and that's how we can change it. 
Thank you. Last, just lastly, sports minister, I'm talking to us on Talk Sport yesterday, and hinting that we might get fans back in, in December. I know Arsenal were very keen and, and worked extremely hard to get fans back for October, which never happened. Um, you must be hopeful and optimistic, maybe, that we might see fans back before Christmas. I'm very hopeful and optimistic because I've seen the plans, all the protocols and all the work and that the club has done um, to try to create a safe environment. Uh, I think we are able to provide that uh, if they decide to move ahead. Uh, the project that uh, they've done, it's very impressive. So whenever we give the green light to do that, uh, we are prepared to, to host them. Thanks, Miguel. Morning, Miguel. Um, just one on, on willing if I could. Um, given, given he went against club guidance not to travel, and you say the issue's now been dealt with, does that mean he, he stays in the match day squad for Sunday or not? That means that the deal is being resolved, explained, and uh, dealt within the team and, and the club. That's all I can say now. OK. Um, Bakayo Sacco spoke after the game the other night, the England game, he said he isn't concerned about burnout, Excuse me, even though he's played 232 minutes during the international break. But does it worry you how many minutes you saw him play? Well, I have to see him today when he comes back, how he's looking, how he's feeling. Obviously, he's a 19-year-old kid that has played a lot of football in the last uh, few months and um, we have to protect him. But um, I understand from Gareth's point of view as well, he had the injury of, of Chilwell and uh, probably he didn't plan to give him that many minutes, but the circumstances forced him to do it. and. Um, and yeah, from my side, it's not ideal, but when I am in, in Gareth's shoes, probably I would have done exactly the same. So it's what it is. Let's see how he comes back and um, try to get him fit and recovered and see how he is for Sunday. Cool. And uh, Pablo Mari, I believe, is, is returning to fitness. His injury seems to take a lot longer to, to heal than, than everyone initially thought. How is he and why was that? Well, he's... Uh, He's looking really good in training. Um, obviously, he had a, a difficult surgery. He had a screw, and sometimes when you have an external body inside, uh, can react in a in a unexpected way, and it was causing some inflammation and irritation in the joint all the time, and the ankle was swelling. So we had to take that out again, which was a little bit of a setback. But uh, he's been working really hard, and he looks really good in training. He joined. Sorry, just one more. He joined, Pablo joined almost a year ago now. He's played only three games in that time, during which you've also signed Gabriel, obviously. Does, does Pablo still have a role within the first team? Yes, he does. And uh, yeah, we've been hit uh, really hard uh, with some big injuries, not only Pablo, but Cedric as well. Since he joined, he had two or three different uh, incidents. Um, Gabi Martinez has been out for such a long time. Callum Chambers got injured after three weeks. Uh, I was here and I still haven't played a single game and I'm still recovering. It's, um, it's what it is. What I can say is the approach of those players and the way they've been trying to, to work um, to be back to their best has been phenomenal in all cases. And let's hope that we can have them, we can use them and, and they can feel part of what we're doing. Thanks, Mikael. Thanks a lot. Okay, um, sorry Thanks. to go back to William again, but just to clarify, did he actually break club rules? Could you just confirm that? I don't confirm anything. Uh, that only it's an issue that has been resolved, explained, and let's move on. Okay. I, I mean, on a general level, are you, are you, is it harder maybe to keep a grip on on discipline at the moment, just because of the 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 nature of the season? You know, the the flights, the, the international games being sort of more prevalent, more condensed. It's impossible because uh, we have so many rules, guidelines that uh, we have to follow that sometimes even without even thinking, you break them. And even in training, when you give a beep to somebody else, you just say, oh, no, I cannot do that. The beep has to be here. Someone has to come with the gloves. Sometimes you don't even know. So I just try to think that we are all very aware of uh, what we are dealing with and we take it very, very seriously. And um, yeah, everybody can make a, a mistake. And it's just where that mistake is coming from, um, I think is the relevant thing. 
Can I also just ask you about Cedric Suarez? Um, he's, he's not played a single minute in the Premier League. Obviously, Hector's been playing very well, but what more does he need to do to, to force his way into the Premier League team? Well, I've seen a big change on, um, on Cedric in the last uh, month or so. I think his performances in Europa, um, they've been much better. Um, he needed some time as well to, to adapt to our way of playing, and most importantly, he needed uh, his fitness level to be uh, to the standards that we knew, and that was impossible because he had some injuries when he came here. He had a really bad injury in his knee after he broke his nose. He had some difficulties, but again, it's a lad that is trying really hard every day in training, that is accepting um, the situation and is fighting against it uh, to prove us wrong and, and try to provide him more opportunities. Thanks, James. Thanks, James. Thanks very much.